The program you are about to watch is part of a free series we are making available to you as a gift from Greg Fritz Ministries entitled Divine Protection. Visit gregfritz.org to download the MP3s and watch the streaming video for free by entering code FREE at checkout. Are you tired of hearing bad news? Tune into the good news of the gospel. Welcome to Good News with Greg Fritz. Hello, I'm Greg Fritz. Welcome to the Good News program where we are wrapping up a series that I've done called Divine Protection. And I've got study notes. If you haven't uh, been watching or following these teachings, go get my study notes. They're on my website under the study note tab on the home page. Download the study notes and get all the protection scriptures in one place and you can refer back to them. We also have the streaming videos and the downloadable audio and mp3 free all 15 sessions. You can go to my website and get that in the free download section and once again we also have a bundle and this is a USB drive and we put all of this material plus more on this USB drive. You can get all 15 sessions plus the study notes, plus this four message audio series called Supernatural Protection, Supernatural Provision. It's all on this uh, USB drive in video and audio. Um, you can listen to it in your car. Or you can watch it on your smart TV or your computer. So it's a great tool for modern times. You know, we have got to find ways to work the Word of God into our busy lifestyle. And we're trying to uh, you know, we're trying to develop new ways for you to do that. So I want to do just a little bit of, of uh, review and from our last episode where I talked about forfeiting our rights for divine protection. The truth is God has promised to protect His people. And He's been in the protection business for many, many years. So it's nothing new in the New Covenant. But we do, as Christians, have the right to trust God to protect us. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6, where it says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. What can man do to me? That is a protection promise. That is something that you can believe and receive for yourself. Uh, when you say, the Lord is my helper, what can man do to me? You're saying God's going to protect me from dangerous people. That is what's implied there. And he actually will, and he does. And so that's a protection promise. There are many others. We're going to look at Psalm 91, which is filled with these promises. But you can forfeit your rights to God's protection. And the first way to do that is to persist in sin. And again, if you didn't hear this teaching, it was in our last episode. And I encourage you to go watch that because I believe it's important. Number one, you persisting in sin forfeits your right. In other words, there are things that you can do. You can get into sin and get on the enemy's territory and your life could be at risk. Even though God wants to protect you, you can go out from under his protection by your own decisions, by persisting in sin. And we quoted Romans 8, 6, where it says to be carnally minded, that means to follow the flesh or fleshly desires, is death. And that uh, will supersede any protection of pro uh, any promise of protection that God has made. Number two, living in disobedience can cause you to forfeit your rights of protection. Uh, if you don't obey God, if you choose to willingly and knowingly disobey God and get beyond His com com commandments or beyond His, His will and, and His instructions for your life, it can cost you. Saul disobeyed, King Saul disobeyed God, and it cost him the, his kingship, his reign as king of Israel, and it cost him his life. And so uh, those decisions are very costly. And then number three, refusing to listen to the warnings of the Holy Spirit. I'm convinced that if you're a child of God, God will, will, will warn you if necessary. And he'll, he'll, so that you can avoid danger and, and avoid the snares of the enemy and avoid dangerous situations. Now, if we refuse to listen to his warnings, then, uh, you know, he's not going to stop us from doing something that he warned us not to do. We still have the free, uh, a free will and the right to do what we choose. But if we'll listen to the Holy Spirit, 
and obey him, he'll keep us out of harm's way. Um, and that simply means that the positive side is, is very encouraging. The positive side is this. If you're living for God and you love God and you want to do the will of God in your life and you're in communication with God on a regular basis, you hear him, he hears you. If you look down on the inside and there's no warning there, there's peace and, and, and assurance there, then, then you can know you're in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. If there's a warning on the inside, you'll know it, and you can recognize that and be quick to obey it. So, uh, you know, these are, are just, this is just common sense, but you have a Father in heaven who knows everything. He cares about you, and He has promised to protect you. So He will warn you if you need to be warned. He will help you avoid situations if you need to avoid them. Uh, let me give you an example, uh, two examples of this. And these kind of, uh, these are, again, these are very uh, dramatic examples. And so I'm going to use them. God works in our lives every day in ways that are much less dramatic than this. But the, the first example that I want to use is, is uh, David. When, when David was told by his father, Jesse, I'm going to read this, 1 Samuel 17, 17. Then Jesse said to his son, David, take now for your brothers this dried grain and 10 loaves and run to your brothers at camp, at the camp. So David was taking food to his brothers. He was too young to be a soldier. His brothers were all in the army. He was too young. So he's taking food to his brothers. Now, he was about to encounter Goliath. You talk about being in harm's way. I mean, that is something that no mother would want her son to do, is to, is to go fight a huge 9 to 11 foot giant. Here's a teenage boy, and he's going to encounter the fight of his life. And so he gets there, uh, or he's on his way to meet Goliath, and you'd think God would be saying, don't go, or watch out, or your life is in danger, there's this huge giant that's, that's going to want to kill you, and none of that happened. As far as we know, David had no encounter with God along the way. God didn't warn him, God didn't say anything. Why? Because David's life was not in danger. David's about to have a tremendous victory. He was on the right path. He was in the will of God. He knew his rights and privileges. And it was the giant who was in trouble, not David. Therefore, there was no warning. There was no interruption. There was nobody there to flag him down and say, you better watch out. Your life could be lost today. None of that happened because... David, not at, that he wasn't in danger or faced someone that was a threat, but it's simply because David was doing the will of God. He was under the protection of God. And no, he was not going to lose his life on that day. In fact, just the opposite was going to occur. So that's what I'm saying is when you're in the right place, you're doing the will of God and you don't have any warning. You may be facing things and you, things may be coming at you. But if you have peace and assurance on the inside, then you don't have to worry about what's ahead. You are well able to handle anything and everything in your path when you're in the will of God and when you're doing the will of God. Then I want to take you to another example. And this example is in Numbers chapter 22. And uh, I'm going to go read this because this is, again, this is a dramatic example. There's a man named Balaam and he's a prophet he was employed by a king named Balak to go curse the armies of God. Balak was in, in, the, in the path of Israel, and, and he knew that things are not going well. Israel's going to defeat me and take my land. And uh, he employed Balaam, this prophet, to go curse Israel. Man, you do not want to try to curse what God is doing. And so Balaam... Uh, he was very seduced by Balak and by all the gifts and all the things. And it was a very tense situation. You could read all about it. But the point is, Balaam was getting on shaky ground. Balaam, he really was a prophet of God, but he's about to get in some things that he shouldn't be involved in. So he accepts this invitation to go curse the armies of God. And he's riding on his donkey and his donkey just finally laid down under him and wouldn't go forward. So he beats his donkey. And uh, it, it's a great story. You should read it in Numbers 22. 
But here's, here's the, where I want to begin this encounter. Now the donkey, verse 23, the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his sword drawn in his hand. And the donkey turned aside out of the way and went into the field. And Balaam struck the donkey to turn her back onto the road. Then the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path between the vineyards with a wall on one side and a wall on the other. When the donkey saw the angel, she pushed herself against the wall, crushed Balaam's foot. So Balaam was mad. And so he got up and struck the donkey. Then in verse 28, the donkey, the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey. She says, what have I done to you that you have struck me these three times? And Balaam said, because you've abused me, I wish there was a sword in my hand and I would have killed you. Which is kind of an, you know, if a donkey speaks to you, <laughs> the last thing I do is talk back to a donkey. You've got to stop and say, what's God trying to tell me here? Because this is very unusual. And it was unusual. The point is, Balaam is about to get on dangerous soil. So God is warning him. You know, the only way that he, I'm, I'm sure Balaam was really not easy to talk to. He seemed to be a pretty stubborn individual. So this is a supernatural way that God is coming. Now, he doesn't do that with us most of the time. He's going to give us an inward witness. He's going to warn us in our spirits. But let, let's follow this out. Then in verse 31, the Lord opened Balaam's eyes and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his sword drawn and he bowed and fell on the ground. And the angel said, why have you struck your donkey these three times? That's what the donkey said. So the angel is actually quoting the donkey and he said, behold, I've come to stand against you because your way is perverse before me. The donkey saw me, turned aside for me these three times, and if she had not turned aside, I would have killed you by now and let her live. And then Balaam said, okay, you got my attention. I'm sorry, I've sinned. And then they went through this conversation. And basically what it was, was Balaam was getting on dangerous territory. Balaam was going out to curse the armies of God. Now, Eventually, God warned him over and over again, don't do this, don't curse them, don't do it. And he was determined to go, so he did go. God allowed him to go. And instead of cursing the armies of God, he blessed them. But do you know what happened after that? Uh, Balak was, was appalled because he paid Balaam to curse the armies of God and he blessed them. So the scripture tells us that what happened was Balaam said, look, if you really want to defeat Israel, you need to seduce them with other gods. And if you'll do that, you can destroy them from the inside. That was what God was trying to get Balaam to avoid doing because that cost Balaam. You find out later that Balaam died with the Midianites. He was killed. His ministry was cut short. His life was cut short. He didn't finish his course. He became really uh, an example of how not to be a prophet. And it all happened because he was making these choices. God was trying to warn him and he refused to, to, to really understand the, 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 the warning and heed the warning. And it cost him his ministry. It cost him his life. So what I'm saying to you is if we as Christians will listen to God's direction, if we'll listen to that inward witness, and if there's peace and there's joy and there's unction on what you're doing, and there's no warning there, you, you'll know it. And if that's the case, then you're right where you need to be. No need to search and look and worry about being, you know, is God out to get me? Am I going to die by some freak accident or whatever? If you are serving God and He's not warning you, then, and you've got peace, you have every right to believe in safety and provision and blessing and fruitfulness in your life. Now, if you look down on the inside and God is warning you and God is trying to tell you something, don't be hard to reach. Don't be hard to communicate with. Obey those inward witnesses, those inward unctions, and obey the, the leading of the Holy Spirit because the Bible says to be spiritually minded, Romans 8, 6, is life and peace. And that's really the key to divine protection, is being spiritually minded. And you can do that. Listen to your spirit. Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit in your spirit. And you can live out the length of your days. And that's what we're, really the whole theme of this teaching is simply this. We have a right to be here. God put us here at this time in history. And because we belong to Him, we can expect to do what Paul did. We can expect to finish our course with joy. And I don't know about you, but that's my goal. That's my, I'm going to put my faith on that. I want to fight a good fight. 
I want to keep the faith, and I want to finish my course. And at that point, I want to depart and be with Christ, just like Paul did. And I believe every Christian has the right to do that. Now, let's go to Psalm 91. Psalm 91 is just full of these protection verses. Now, I want you to read Psalm 91 as if it was written to you, because it is. Psalm 91 is not just for Old Testament saints. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 1.20 that all the promises of God in Him are yes to you and amen. And so these promises apply to you. You can take Psalm 91 as your own covenant with God, because through Christ it is. Here you are. So this is you. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's you. you in, if you're in Christ, you dwell under the shadow of the Almighty. And I don't have to tell you, there is safety under the shadow of the Almighty. If you're dwelling there, you are safe from harm. Verse 2, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him I will trust. You should be saying this. And, and that's the question here is, what are you saying? Are you saying, I don't know what's going to happen to me? Are you saying the world's not a safe place anymore? Are you saying, I feel like my life is at risk? Are you saying, I'm not sure what the future holds for me? Those are not the things you should be saying. Why? You have a covenant with God. And, and so, uh, believing these promises will change your quality of life. It can change the way you look at the world around you. Because the world is changing, no doubt. The world is getting more unsafe. The world is getting more unstable. That simply means we need to double up on our, our, our knowledge of the Word of God and take our cues and our sense of assurance from God's Word. So as a child of God, you should say of the Lord, He is my refuge and He's my fortress. He's my God, and in Him I will trust. Man, if you just meditate on that verse alone, it would give you such confidence to live life today. I'm just trying to help people that have been maybe surprised, taken aback, overwhelmed by the changes that are happening in our world, and maybe you don't feel as zealous and as, as excited about life as you, as you used to. You, get in the Word. Nothing's changed as far as God is concerned. Your future is still secure. Your, your path is still before you. Your destiny is still obtainable. But taking God at His Word is going to be essential. We don't need the government to tell us everything's going to be okay. We don't need for the economy to perform at a high level. We don't need global leaders to get together and tell us they've got it under control. All we need is the Word of God. And I'll tell you, when it comes to protection, you won't find better promises than in Psalm 91. Let's go on, verse 3. Surely He shall deliver you. He will. He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler, from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. Isn't that powerful? That, that He's going to cover us, and we can take refuge and safety under His wings. Man, th these are words from heaven, and, and never have they been so important in my lifetime than now. Especially if you're dealing with, with anxiety and fears about being unsafe. You know, if you're concerned about your personal well-being, you're never going to be truly happy and free. And God wants us all to be happy and free. We can fight these battles in our mind with the Word of God. We need to allow these words to be more real to us than the words of the, of the nightly news, the newspaper, the current events, the reports that we get on a continual basis. Focus on these words and let them bring comfort and assurance and, and boldness to your life. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you'll take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. That is so good. 
You know, there are people that are afraid of crime and they're afraid in their own homes and, and, and at nighttime especially. He says, look, I know you deal with these night terrors, but you don't have to. You, you shall not be afraid of terror by night. We can stand on the Word of God, say, I'm not going to be afraid. You know, you can't control the, the level of crime and the activity in your city. You can't control that, but you can control the way you react to it. And you can decide from this night forward, I am not going to have terror in my house, in my mind. I'm not going to give in to that. And I'm not going to allow that to dominate my thinking. He goes on to say, verse 6, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. What's amazing to me is this, this psalmist put a lot of thought into this. Man, he's talking about every kind of attack and, and, and threat and thing that you would face as a human being. And he's saying God's protection is greater than all these things. I mean, he's pretty, pretty imaginative here. Arrows, pestilence, snares, uh, destruction. And then he finally says this. This is so powerful. He says in verse 7, A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Isn't that good? So this is for people that say, look, it's happening. People are dying. People are being destroyed. People are being killed and robbed and murdered. And what makes you think it won't happen to you? This verse, this verse, there, there are things that happen in the world. Things do go wrong. But between me and God, I have a covenant. And I don't, I'm, not, I'm not basing my agreement with God on what happened to so-and-so or what happened in this city or that. Listen, I have a covenant with God, and it may happen. It may be happening, but it doesn't have to happen to me. Say, well, what if you believe that and you're wrong? Well, at least I'll be happy. <laughs> at least I'm happy. Don't bother me. Verse 8, only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Then in verse 9, he says to you, because you've made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. That's so powerful. You can stand on that verse and you could say, no plague will come nigh my dwelling. And you might say, well, I've already been sick. There's already been sickness in my house. That doesn't mean that you can't stand on this word. That doesn't mean that the Bible's not true. Look, Take that word and, and resist these things and stand against it. You may say, well, we're dealing with sickness in our house right now. Stand against it. You haven't lost. Take the word of God and set up a standard against that thing and begin to resist and believe and begin to confess the word of God. We don't lose and we don't quit. So, you know, you're somewhere in the process of victory. Just think about that. We're going to come out on top. This may not have happened yet. Uh, but we don't give up. It's just a sad state of affairs when you give up your, your, your zeal for life, your desire to live, your desire to do something and, and be something for God. You don't have to let that happen. No matter what's going on, we can stand on God's word. Verse 11, For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they'll bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and cobra. The young lion and serpent you will trample underfoot. Isn't that powerful? What, what a great picture. I mean, he keeps expanding the list of threats that you could possibly face as a human being, even in the modern world. And he continues to say, there is a, you know, he doesn't get to the end and say, but this problem is going to be the end of you. Never. He never says that. There isn't anything that can outdo God's protection in your life if you'll trust God. You'll tread upon the lion and cobra and the young lion and serpent you'll trample underfoot because he has set his love upon, let me go, go to this, upon me. That's God speaking. Because you've set your love on him, he will deliver you, set you on high because you've known his name. You will call upon God and he says, I will answer. I'll be with him in trouble. I will honor him and deliver him. Isn't that powerful? God's making these promises first person to you. He's saying, you're going to call on me. I'll answer you. I'll be with you and I'll deliver you and I'll honor you. 
He didn't say, but if, if a pandemic occurs, then all bets are off. My promises don't work when the economy is really bad. If the value of the dollar goes to a certain level, you can't count on this. If the police force is dismantled, none of this applies to you. That is not what he said. These promises are independent of people and governments. God will do this for you personally because you belong to Him. Finally, verse 16, and this really sums up our teaching on protection. This is our goal. He said, with long life, I'll satisfy Him and show Him my salvation. That's what I want. That's what I believe you want. I want a long, satisfying life. I want to run the race that's set before me, and I want to finish my course with joy. And there, Psalm 91 is filled with promises that lead to that end. I'm going to accept those. I'm going to accept those as mine. I'm going to believe them. I'm going to confess them, and I'm going to act like they're true. Well, this is the end of this series. We're going to start something new. We've got a lot more teachings to put into these good news programs. They're all queued up and ready to go, and we'll record them when we can. But uh, I am so thankful for 500 episodes. This is episode number 500. So if you're part of our audience, I want to th say thank you for making this worthwhile. To know you're there and to know that you're listening, and some of you look forward to these uh, programs even before they get to you, I am so grateful to you. You've allowed me to teach the Word of God, to do what I love during a time when travel's been limited, my access to live crowds have been limited, and uh, you have made it possible for me to continue to teach the Word more than ever. Thank you for that. If you're a partner, thank you for being a partner of this ministry. If you're an audience member, thank you for making this work because really we do it for you. Some choose to help us financially and make, uh, help us pay the bills, but it's all so that I can get this program out and offer it to people around the world free of charge. And nothing could make me happier. I'm so glad. Uh, that we've completed our 500th episode. I have plans for 500 more, and I look forward to the future when we can live life together. You know, I, I want to feel like we're going to do this together. We've been put in this generation at the same time. We're running this race at the same time, and I want to help you cross the finish line with joy. God bless you today, and I'll see you on the next episode. Until then, remember this, the good news is so good, the bad news doesn't matter. Do you struggle with fear and anxiety concerning your personal safety? This series will teach you that God's Word is filled with promises about your protection. Call our helpline at 918-749-7744 Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Central Time. Episode number 500 has been completed and thank you for being there and being a part of this. If you want to help me and partner with me, I'd invite you to pray and ask God if He'd like for you to invest in our ministry. I want to make 500 more, and I can't do it by myself. So if you'd like to partner with our ministry, uh, contact us in our helpline. The number's on the screen. Or go to my website. There's a partner page. You can actually sign up there. If you'd like to give automatically, monthly, we can set that up for you as well. We'd love to hear from you today. And together, we'll preach good news to the whole world.